The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, welcome. To my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, big dog, Travis Woof Woof McElroy. Hello, this is your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Even though a lot of people like to pretend it isn't the case, like my grandpa Dan, this is my job. Yeah. Right? This right. is my office. You're in my office now. This is on my courtroom. Did I record this show last Friday for an audience of our beloved friends? I did. Yeah. Did I record this show again on the following Monday? Yes. yes. Yes, I did. Am I recording it now again on the Friday following that Monday, making our third performance in seven days? Yes, but this is my office. This is where I work. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we also <laughs> did work, do- Travis, you're interrupting me at work. I know I'm interrupting you at work, but we did also do, I, I guess at our other job, Adventure Zone and Sawbones and Schraners and Wonderful, are those separate jobs or is it in the same office? I'm lost. That's it's, my office uh, too. That's different offices. Different offices, different jobs, same coliseum. It's yeah. just us versus all the other. It's all Wait, we work podcast. the battlearium. So what about when we do business meetings and stuff? That's also in the battle area. And when we gymnasium. do phone calls? Gymnasium, gymnasium battle dome. Battle. Oh, wait, knives are we fighting? Are we doing our job? Battle knives, but with comedy. What? I'm this confused. is my office. This is my office. Well, is it an office where you do battle? It's an office. It's a studio. It's a gymnasium. It's an art Thank you. It's an cube. experience. It's a it's family, a really. It's a dream scene. It's a fucking surfboard. Wait, what? It's I'm, a fucking a Subway sandwich restaurant. It's a fucking pop-up tent. It's I mean, a my fucking, desk sucks compared to your guys. Yeah, it's yeah. a desk. It's my it's my father, my mother. It's my it's it's my desk. What? And uh, it's your desk? It's a coliseum. It's you my studio space. It's my desk. work zone. This is everything. This podcast is everything to me. I just want to reinforce that, like. We take how seriously we take this, and I feel yeah. like a lot of people don't get like they'll just listen to it. And this is just gonna beyond, but some people listen to this at a faster speed than we recorded it. And like, I don't want to be the person to tell you this, but I will be. It's not sustainable because I can't do them faster. You oh, know what I, I mean? See. You're gonna yeah. bu- you're gonna use them all up. That's not sustainable. I want to reinforce sustainable use of podcast. Yeah, when you, and that is yeah. not sustainable usage. When you harvest a podcast, you have to plant another podcast in its place, right? Yes, yes. and you got to cycle through podcasts. You know what I mean? Like we've got to we we we've stretched this taffy out as far as she'll go. If we're not careful, we're gonna we're gonna have a podcast dust bowl, people. I've been saying this for years now, but we gotta let some of the fields rest. They're gonna go to dust. They're gonna mm-hmm. whip it up. All the podcast cows are gonna get buried in podcast dirt, and it's gonna be a real problem down in podcast Oklahoma. And Travis is doing his best by starting a bunch of podcasts and then letting them die yeah. and then burying their corpses in the yeah. grounds to let their nutrients enrich the soil for the next podcast. I killed Hal Lublin seven years ago. The next podcast are the mushrooms that grow on the corpse of Travis's abandoned podcast. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing my best. I even started, I started streaming just to use up less podcast resources. You guys are welcome. Thank you for that. Your streams are the compost. Yeah. Of. Yeah. Straight. Here's a television show. This is what people don't know is I started streaming and I stopped creating podcasts, but I'm still canceling podcasts at the same rate. So now I'm creating more. I've canceled other people's podcasts at this point. You know how your favorite podcast listener at home got canceled? I did that. You're welcome. Yeah. True. Well, we still got to do this one, though. And I, do uh, we? I think we've, uh, yes, we've seen... we do, because this is our office. Oh, right. This yeah, yeah. Our, yeah, it's yeah right. A firefighter so doesn't go into the office and say, I put out three fires this week. I'm done. I'm done with fires. People still yeah. need us. You, you know, know what? Yeah. But here's the thing. Hey, th- you guys ever think about it? if a firefighter goes into work and doesn't do anything all day, that's a good day? Right? Wow. Like, if wow. you came home and he's like, I didn't do shit today, people would be like, awesome. Awesome. Congratulations, Jim. But when I do that, people are like, where's the podcast, Travis? Yeah. Yeah, the work you do is about on par with fire firefighters. Well, I'm not allowed to take an easy day day. like a firefighter who doesn't get an alarm. You know what I mean? Right. What's he doing all day? Or you think they you think they hit snooze sometimes? Yeah. On the fire? A fire alarm that goes off, boop, oh, five more minutes. It depends on how many <laughs> alarms it is. If it's a five alarm fire, they got to be there, right? They but maybe a two or a one. A cute, fi- a cute little fire. A one is like a, somebody dropped like a lit cigarette in a trash can, but it's outside and the trash can's made of metal. So it's definitely a fire. And there's So it'll figure itself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually the trash will all burn up. And then is that good? We don't know. We don't know yet, but it's all stardust, isn't it? Yeah. Star stuff, baby. Wow. Yeah. Okay, this is an advice show. We help people here. Believe it or not. You're having fun. <laughs> Just sit there and enjoy it. <laughs> Just sit here and <laughs> fucking guzzle it down. This might be Grandpa's last podcast. Sit there and enjoy it, and we're going to have a good time together as a family. You can go, you know, watch a hollow cube on TikTok after this. Right now, you're going to have a media delivered either way god intended at 1.0 x or slower or slower do your Savor part it. <laughs> do your part <laughs> to preserve our limited podcast resource only you can preserve only podcast you and, and you know what stop listening <laughs> <That's enough>. <laughs> <laughs> you need to keep consuming them at this alarming rate yeah that's we wouldn't have to keep making them. Laugh more. Pause every time you laugh. And Roman Mars it out. died eight years ago, and his brain is in a jar, and they won't let it stop podcasting. Won't let him you. die. You nope. know, listen to podcasts the way Sting would. That's what I say. You know what I mean? Yes. Five minutes listen, two hours off on a beach. <laughs> How would Sting listen to a podcast? He goes think. <laughs> <laughs> probably in a really cool oil. way. I know you're way. doing a tantric thing, but like, he probably has a giant podcasting sweater. He slips on when he's ready to enjoy one and a huge mug that he uses for his podcasting kombucha. Oh, see, yeah. I was thinking more he would be in some kind of like floating sensory deprivation chamber where the podcast is all around him and he is in the podcast and the podcast is him and he fully experiences it with every like ounce of his body. One time Sting was like, yeah, I like to take my time before I nut. And the rest of us <laughs> lost our fucking minds and painted this picture. I bet you Sting, here's my thing about Sting. I bet you he's the most vanilla ass boring dude in the whole world. It's just one time he said, yeah, I like to not nut immediately. And we were all like, wow, what a God. <laughs> it is amazing. Teach me. <laughs> this man made a bunch of... <laughs> Uncorroborated claims, my, let's just say. Be my, sh- be my Sherpa stink. Yeah, I just like to, when I'm having sex, I don't like to jizz like instantly. Wow, look at this fucking hippie. Hippie dippy doo doo. You're right, and that it became the only thing we wanted to fucking talk about. His, like, his name is Gordon Sumner. No one ever mentioned it again because no, he said he, he liked doing hits. it a little bit before he nuts. <laughs> he I like to hold off. Hits. I just don't yeah. go full at it right away because I'm worried about, you know, jizzing too soon. So I take my time in these fields of gold. 
the man know. can't even release new music because people we are like, he certainly waited before he nutted on this one. Yeah. This is all we talk about is Sting anymore. Also, is that something anyone could do? Just like start publicly talking about how they, they like to wait before they nut and get a reputation for like tantric shit? Cause Being it, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just a thing? Like, because I don't feel like, I feel like Sting would be like, I'm really cool and I wait before I nut. And everyone went, okay. Whoa, what an awesome! No one went. Could. Fuck you, Steve. Prove it. Yeah, prove it. Okay. <laughs> Show me. This is right starting now. to feel like tantric advice at this point. Please read the. First I just question. think. I just think it's a. You brought the point up. That's the only thing we talk about anymore with Sting is that he likes to wait a bit. <laughs> what else does he do? <laughs> I've gotten really into sourdough lately. I mean, here's the thing. He's doing like duets with Shaggy, and no one wants to talk about it. Like in a hundred years, if people will be like some popular musical artists of the 1980s and 90s were Sting, a guy that like <laughs> take a second before he does everywhere. <laughs> what kind of music does he do? It's lost to time. Lost I honestly to don't history. remember. It's the only, the only thing we captured was that he liked to take a bit before he nuts. It might just be a breath. We don't right. Know. If they had let him fin- if they had let him finish, which is already a challenge, he would have been like, "Yeah, I like to take my time when I have sex. It takes me like seven minutes to do it." And we're like, "Oh, <laughs> oh okay. It's not, oh, it's not that's, good. that's all right, that's Sting. It's not bad, Sting." So I'm sorry. IMDb said he wrote two episodes of Lucifer. That can't be right. Get out. Okay. It can't be right. Wait, Sting wrote two episodes of Lucifer? It lists him as a writer on two episodes of, of Lucifer, but that's got to be wrong. Right? That can't be true. Oh, no, sorry. He wrote songs on the oh. soundtrack for the series Lucifer. He did not write two episodes of Lucifer. I was about to say. Okay. My wonderful father in law has a trail camera. Do you guys know what a trail camera is? It's a camera on I a trail. I think it's like an aut- aut- like a- automatic camera that takes Oh, there's like, well, okay. Yeah. Trail camera. I should have waited for the context clues here. Uh, that he uses at his house in rural Virginia to capture photos of the surrounding wildlife. Between one and four times a week, he will email us photos of deer, bears, turkeys, and coyotes from the camera. Although mostly it's deer. Mm-hmm. I've run out of ways to respond to email photos of these woodland friends. And if we don't respond, he texts us. And says, did you see my photo? What are some good ways to respond to emailed photos of a deer? <laughs> That's from Befuddled in Brooklyn. I, I, I love these beautiful animals. Yeah. Um, but we have deer that come in our front yard literally every day. Oh, yeah. And gobble, gob, gobble up the jasmine. And it's it doesn't bother me. It's like. I'm sure you guys are getting more out of this than I am, mm-hmm. but I I have become completely inoculated to deer. Unless I saw one that had big antlers the other day. Oh like, yeah, oh, that's damn. the best. That's yeah. great. That's I don't know why that's so awesome. I don't know why there's a natural thing when you see a deer that has big antlers where you're like, that's different and awesome. And I don't know how that instinct turns into, and I'm gonna kill you because of it. Well, because of how many antlers you have and how big they are, that's so awesome and different. You must die. <laughs> I'll have them, thank you. There's another end of that spectrum, though, too, when I see a little youngling, a tiny yeah. deer who's maybe even a little wobbly need, and I'm oh, like, God. I'm going to protect you with my everything. And then right. there's the between deer where I'm just like, fuck off. Get out of the fucking way. Grow and- antlers. Deer come, in, deer come in our yard all the time, and every time my dogs go absolutely bananas, but especially my little dog, Buttercup, who weighs mm, about 30 pounds, and I yeah. think, what the fuck are you going to do? If I let you out there right now, you going to take down that deer, Buttercup? Bullshit. Sometimes you get too hung up on that you need to create a memorable response to something. You know, I sometimes, you, it, not everyone has to be gold. Sometimes it could just be like, hey, nice shot. Yeah. Cool. Cool hey, deer. Cool deer. Right. Love it. Love this. Nice nice shot. All right. I'm going to take a, a a shot in the dark and say, your father-in-law might be retired, and it sounds mm. like he enjoys this, and mm. he maybe has not processed whether other people enjoy it, so he assumes other people enjoy it at the same level he enjoys it, and simply acknowledging the exchange, he feels like he's giving you something. All you need to do is acknowledge it and say, cool deer, and that's help him, it. Help him get onto the gram. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Now that we're way, talking. Everybody could appreciate his, his great work. And all you have to do is like it. 
All you gotta do is one quick like, and then he knows you saw it. You don't you gotta comment it. or nothing. Then you can share with all your friends and be like, "Look at this great deer! This one, this one's a good one." Everybody. Well, what's more likely is that he won't get a lot of engagement on his deer picks, and that's how he finds out. To like, oh fuck, these are actually. Oh wait, these don't have the cool. They don't have a lot of antlers. That's to, boring. I mean, to be fair, Griffin, it doesn't sound like he's getting a lot of engagement now. Right, but why not have the internet break that to him? Then <laughs> I mean, have you could, have to do it. Maybe he could find some really juggy deers. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, oh sick, Trav. You fucking dog. He's gonna get some juggy deers, and then he's gonna oh, get the, deers. He's gonna nice. get them clicks. What is that even? What's you that? You know, girlfriend. What? Think about it. You know, girlfriend. Think about it. The deer that. Can get it, you know what I mean? The ones that humans like, you know you what I mean? You get yeah. juggy ones. Go, oh, those tasty deer. Anybody can like it, like a nice juggy deer. People can be into deers. It's twenty twenty one. This got this nominative. was this was acceptable. I Everybody think for no 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 no. Listen 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 listen. Okay, okay, okay. This was acceptable for like the first two times you guys were talking about it, yeah. and then I think for a minute and a half was way too long to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Well. I'm sorry we talked about it for seven minutes. I'm assuming they, that Rachel trimmed it a little bit. Um, but we did about a, a seven minutes of junkie deer material. Yeah, I got a, I got another suggestion. I got another suggestion for you kay. guys. Um, you could, after your uh, father-in-law, sit, let's say his name's Dave. Um, after Dave sends you a picture of a deer, uh, be like, this is great, Dave. You got to have some more pictures of deer. And then be like, oh yeah, no problem. And then when you get those pictures, she'll be like, oh, these are pretty good, but you, I gotta get some more great pictures. And you just keep asking for more and more and more pictures until he runs out. And he's like, I, this is getting a little bit irritating. I don't, I don't really want to send you it uh, anymore. Oh, so just, you're just saying ruin the relationship. No, I'm just saying like, if you get real thirsty for deer pics, yeah, eventually he, he will run out of them. You got any pics of the deer's feet, Dave? <laughs> Dave, cool. Man. Um, you got to be more subtle with that. They're like, oh, cool pick. I love how you got a good shot of the feet there, and then sort of slowly guide him. Like, oh, nice man, feet looking bigger. Uh, just over and over again. Oh man, there should be a name for deer feet. <laughs> you can also ask him to just hold on to them until like maybe the last day of the month, and then just like let them let them loose in like a huge bodacious wave, or just like. Ooh! Ask him to save them all up and make a coffee table book for you for Christmas. Oh, or, a flip, awesome. or a flip book. Yeah. Put all of them in one thing and it's a flip book. Yeah, shitty, not like <laughs> non linear mule linear flip book. Or it's just like bear turkey, bear turkey, turkey, deer, 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 deer bear turkey, bear, deer. If you flip it quick enough, it's a crime against God and nature. You know what sucks about this? If I get pics of turkeys, who cares? Deers, who cares? Coyotes, eh, who cares? But if I get pics of bears, I'm yep. gonna be like, "Fucking cool! Look at cool. the size! Of, look at the size of that unit!" So you can't shut the hose off. Nope, because that will mean no more bear pics. No, this is like a this is a wildlife blind bag, and you you have to buy it to see if you get a bear in there. Bear, you know what yeah, I mean? a chase bear. Yeah, there might for be a sure. bear in there. Ooh, is this a shiny holographic bear? I love it. Um. The, the the summer months are upon us, and it's things are a little bit different this year. And I don't know about you all, but the place I've been most excited to get out to now that we've really cracked this thing, by which I mean COVID, by which I mean it's still an issue, is the skate park. Okay. And so I did. I received. I talked to the wizard of the cloud uh, via Maria, who sent this uh, WikiHow article in, and it's super important. Does Maria will- work for the wizard? Maria is a apprentice. Apprentice, ah, yes. Apprentice. Okay. Uh, you um, basically, so the answer is yes, but unpaid. Oh, yeah. so Maria, uh, you're better than this. Freaking, the Wizard of the Cloud has so much knowledge and power, but is just kind of shitty as a like ethically as a person. Oh yeah, or I guess an entity. I guess the wizard isn't. I'm pretty sure you don't get to be a wizard without being kind of shitty. Sure, yeah. So anyway, this is going to teach us how to differentiate between a real skater and a poser skater. Oh, thank God. Yeah. A lot of it is uh, watch them skate. Well, okay. Which then we're getting a little bit into. Let's test your. Let's test your. I guess this whole article is about let's test your cred out. But there's ways of doing it that's not going to make you look like a huge creep running up on them yeah. while they skate and say like, "Do a fucking trick. Do a <laughs> fucking trick. Let's see it." One, test their knowledge in a conversation. Ask for ba- listen for basic skateboard terms and slang. 
like real trucks. skaters are going to talk. Real skaters are going to talk about frontside and backside tricks. Yeah, they're going to use basic skateboard terms like pop and kickflip. Listen for one of the most basic terms of all: ollie. Yeah, they man. Won't, I, they I, won't say things like. Uh, I I so I hauled a bunch of perps into the station this yeah. weekend, and it was a great <laughs> yeah. weekend of being a cop. They won't say anything like "Who wants a pepperoni on another pizza pie?" because that's a pizza restaurant worker. Now, Griffin, a skater will typically talk about ollies and kickflips. They won't say things about your drive shaft because that's a car person. Now, Man, Griffin, are you it. scared that in doing this article publicly, what you're really doing is teaching people what other people are looking for out of real skaters? And you're, you're right. Of, you're teaching people to pose more effectively. You're right. You could say one of these terms. <laughs> this first one's, I think, fake. And actually, Travis has the Ouroboros is wrapped all the way around. And this article is, in fact, a test to see who is a real skater or not. Because the first term they list here is a slappy. I don't know. That's huh. kickflip. I've heard of vert. Yes. Tweak. I guess stall. Sure. Shifty. Huh? Kick turn. No. And mob. Not real. Some of those are not real. Slappy is definitely not real. Slappy is sla when you mess up on a trick and your board flips up in the air and smacks you in the face and you cry a little bit. And you cry. I mean, that's what a, that's. And you look shifty. But it's a good way to turn. ingratiate yourself to other skaters because skaters are very caring and nurturing a lot. And so when you slap yep. yourself in the face and a single tear rolls down, they'll immediately want to make you feel better and take you out for ice cream and maybe eat some fries. And isn't that a better result from this than trying I mean, to really? shame somebody for whether or not they like actually know about skateboarding? Hey, here's a little, uh, here's, a, here's a test. Here's a fucking Blade Runner test for how to really catch them in your drag net. You could try asking something like, so, have you mastered a kickflip on a vert ramp yet? Or, have you seen Robert do kickflips? He has huge pop. <laughs> <laughs> what is this person in the article trying to do? Um, prove whether or not somebody's a real or a, a, a phony. Fake. A phony, yeah, a we're phony. We're phony. Voight, fake. Voight comping some uh Voight some comping skaters. a fucking skater poser, I mean, yeah. this article should say... Watch them skate for five seconds. If they yeah. fall over and cry for a half hour and then yeah. have their dad come pick them up, then they're probably faking it. But See, I mean, even, just... that, even that assumes that if I Travis McRoy right down, I have never skateboarded in my life. If I went down to a store and bought one, I don't even know where I would do that. I went to a skate park and tried to skate that people would be like, he's trying to pose as a real skater. And I'd be like, clearly I'm not. Clearly yeah. I, there's nothing about what I'm doing right now that implies that I think I'm doing a good job. I'm trying to learn. And people might yell poser. And I'd say, no, I'm just beginning. This is the second no, phase different. of my lifestyle. And I'm just learning right now. It's what? different. A shitty skater is not a poser. No, no, no. But if someone is just sitting on the sidelines holding a board that they've clearly scratched up with a pocket knife or something, and they're going, that's a bad jump bounce that you did. Now that, my friends, that's a poser. God, how lazy is that person that they wouldn't even learn the word kickflip? I know. How well, did you where, get into Where were they going to learn it, Griffin? Yeah, that's fair. Um, you could try asking, do you hold your board by the trucks or deck? Do you think it matters? Now, that's, that one might actually catch me. Ask if they ride regular or goofy. Now, listen, a poser's going to hear this and say, well, I don't ride goofy. Oh, I'm a fucking no. kick-ass skater. I'm a good skater. A real serious one. Do you what, say, what I do you think Max Goof would say? Max Goof, uh, especially Nothing, in the extremely not a goofy movie, do you think he would be like, I ride goofy? Or even if he knew what he was talking about, he was like, I don't want to be like my dad. Goofy, aka George Keefe. We can all agree that Max from Goofy Movie is a fucking poser skater. Um, oh, wow. Hey, Chris. fuck off. Hey, Griffin, a, fuck I, off. Bart Bar Simpson is a poser. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, you see him, he skates once and then he'll go two years without skating. That is yeah. true. And then they'll see him skate again. It's like, okay, so you, do you love it? Do you live for it? Yeah. Do you live for the grind, the daily grind? Well, he might also just be doing it when he's not on camera. That's possible. Yeah. Um, ask them about their board. Ask what material it's made out of. Do you <clears throat> tighten or loosen your trucks when you get on your board? What type of art do you have on your deck? You know, real stumpers for a person who can't just look at their fucking skateboard and say, oh, it's got a, uh, let's see, looks like some tribal art and <laughs> uh, some fire. Yeah, I'll put a, tribal I'll put a art funny and fire, Marvin man. the Martian on there. It's pretty good. Yep. Um, ask who their favorite skaters and skate brands are. They'll know more pro names than Tony Hawk, Bam, and Ryan Sheckler. Damn it. I'm out. Damn it. I'm out of them. 
Um, they will know about a few name brands. Even if it's a negative opinion, it's still knowledge. Ooh, is that's Stussy a good one? way around it. Is Stussy one? Stussy, Birdhouse, uh, uh, Girlfriend, uh, Journeys, uh, that Hot robot. Topic, Lids, uh, Spencer's, Orange Julius, <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Anne's, <laughs> Whammo, Whammo, Slammo, Whammo Brand, Silly Skateboards, Big Kicks, <laughs> Skateboard, Skate Boys. Skate boys, skate men's. Wheel you could go to the person and just be like, hey, get this phony hawk. Mm-hmm. And if they look at you like, oh, I'm busted, then you got them. But if yeah. they look at you like, God, that's funny. <laughs> hey, if they carry their board by the trucks, that's called a mall grab. And it's usually considered to be a poser red flag. Let me continue, because the next point is there's a lot of controversy about whether or not the mall grab truly indicates you're a poser, since a lot of skaters these days do hold their boards like that. So inconclusive. So in conclusion, this is a bad article. Watch them. Then there's a whole section that's like, watch them skate, study what they do, watch them, follow them. Watch them skate? I just feel like should be one, right? It should be number one. No, Justin, because someone could be a bad skater and not a poser, right? And someone could be a very good skater and be a poser. That's true. Classic poser moves include just standing around, chatting, smoking cigarettes, oh, that's texting, a big one. and getting away. And I'm going to say vapes in there too. Oh, yeah. texting sure. and get only a poser even has their vape rig on them at the skate park because they could fall down on it and either bl- break the glass on it or explode the battery. Yeah, that's why I yeah. built mine into my board. I got ohms everywhere. I got Sick. ohms all over my pants. I do this thing where I go up in the air, off, I vert off the kickflip, and then I hold the board up in the air and I just rip a big rip right <laughs> off the end of the board. Uh, yeah. And then when I come down, I let go of a big cloud and I call it Puff of the Magic Wagon. <laughs> yeah. So they've, these are getting more intrusive. You watch them, study them, ask them to do tricks. They'll say like, no, I can't right now. I'm sick. And you say, oh, well, here's some here. <laughs> I why brought are medicine. you here? You should be at home. I brought medicine for you. Take the medicine and then fucking Ollie. But then the next one is inspect their appearance. Huh. Examine them for <sighs> scrapes and bruises. Yeah. If you skate, yeah. you're going to fall off your board and get scraped off. Even if you're good, when you're coming up with new tricks, you're going to fall. Fuck you, you will. I've been skating for years. I don't fall ever. I have never been scraped or scratched while doing my art on the board. Sometimes when I'm skating, I will fall into the air. Mm-hmm. That's how good I am. I float. And then look out for name brand clothing because that means that they're a poser. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'm sure there's good skaters who had just, I just bought these shoes. That's why they're not scuffed up. Fuck yeah. off. Phony, hey. oh. phony jabroni. No, I just got off work at Orange Julius. That's why my shirt says it. <laughs> <That's> sure, sure, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Uh, let's take a quick break and head on into the money zone. Is that a, is that a movie? We're sponsored this week by Orange Julius a company that I don't know has any brick and mortar stores anymore. You can only order them online. You're going to get an Orange Julius sent right to your house. Uh, All right, let me do the jingle and then we'll wrap this one up. Okay, thank you. Orange Julius, when you gotta have thick juice. Uh, we are actually sponsored by Squarespace, which is a wonderful Boring. Way. That's not funny. Like Orange Julius. Yawn. If you want to make an Orange Julius fan site, mm-hmm. uh, maybe turn into Squarespace. It's already being used by people who produce food, like Orange Julius, maybe. I don't know for sure. <laughs> Sports teams, uh, furniture. It says furniture. I think they probably mean people who sell it or make it or something, not furniture itself, making its own bespoke website. Gamers. Yeah, buddy. Mm. The Wedding furniture of people. Everybody's making websites, and now you can make your dreams. It Take the first step. This is an attainable, concrete step that you can take towards your goals. That's not that's not kidding around. That's real. Do something. Do something. Take that first step and build a beautiful website from Squarespace. You, you can know. showcase your work. You can promote your physical or online business, and you can do it all with beautiful, customizable templates. Free and secure hosting, uh, a lot of really helpful analytics, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Just go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. 
I want to tell you guys about Stitch Fix because I just got a pair of really you get? beautiful What'd boots. You get? Beautiful boots, like, huh? Like black, like thick soled, and they tie in the front, but they zip on the side. And that's a winning combo for yours truly because once I find that perfect fit, I don't want to have keep to keep there. untying it and retying it. Yes. These are beautiful boots, and I got a cool jacket that I'm looking forward to wearing when the weather gets chilly. And you could get into the Stitch Fix lifestyle as well. Because it's great, and you never uh, have to worry about if things don't fit or if it's not your style, because Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists that's your unique size, style, and budget. You try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. There's no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep. And there are no hidden fees ever. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash my brother, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash my brother. Schmanners. Noun. Definition. Rules of etiquette designed not to judge others, but rather to guide ourselves through everyday social situations. Hello, Internet. I'm your husband host, Travis McElroy. And I'm your wife host, Teresa McElroy. Every week on Schmanners, we take a look at a topic that has to do with society or manners. We talk about the history of it. We take a look at how it applies to everyday life. And we take some of your questions. And sometimes we do a biography about a really cool person that had an impact on how we view etiquette. So join us every Friday and listen to Schmanners on MaximumFun.org or wherever podcasts are found. Manners, Schmanners. Get it? So what now? Well, now's the time, Justin, where we take a deep, dark look into our souls and see how we're doing on this episode. How do you think it's going so far, guys? Uh, overall, very, very good. Yeah? I, say. I would say yeah, that this very is good. the best episode we've ever done. One of the top episodes we've ever done. I have a quick, um, I want to, this is like a new version of Munch Squad. Okay. Where it's just for vegans and vegetarians. Oh, okay. So and it's like Munch Squad, it, but it, like the, the combination of vowels is maybe a little bit different. Yeah. Like my, what would be a good name for like light Munch Squad? Like a, you know, like a meat free Mm -hmm. fake munch squad you know like with a k probably or like munch munch squad munch Why? squad with a k kind of anyway okay dun 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 <laughs> Why does okay? No wait, hold on. Why does any of it have to be different? I want a munch squid. Squad. I want a munch squad. Squad. This is gonna freak you guys out. You guys know the naked chicken chalupa? Yeah, sure. I love it. Right. Listen to this. Oh. They're doing. <laughs> oh, this what? they're doing a meatless version of the naked, <laughs> of the naked chicken chalupa. It's so meaty. It's vegetarians so are just like us, and they want to be dirtbags too sometimes. And this will let them simulate being absolute dirtbags. It's uh, it's really with, the main thing they miss out on. Yeah, is getting to live like straight have, up dirt. They bags. have ways of getting protein and all the strong beef power that I get when I eat a big hamburger. But what they don't usually get is that I feel like shit after I eat most meals. Yeah, listen, when vegans get drunk, they want to make food mistakes too. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. When they're exactly. real hungover, they want to get a rumbly tumbly that gives them the vegan shits later too. You know what I mean? So let's do this thing. Yeah. Give everybody them. an equal opportunity to make bad life choices. The naked chalupa. This is actually called the naked chalupa with a crispy plant based shell. Awesome name. That's really the awesome actual name. name. Really it's described catchy. as a really new close. menu innovation that gives vegetarian and veggie curious. Oh. <laughs> <fans>. <laughs> I've been looking for a way to get into vegetables, and this is just the gateway drug I require. A new menu innovation that gives vegetarian and veggie curious fans everywhere reasons to celebrate. Oh! Now, hold on, wait. Is that spelled S H E L L a break, or did it say do a share impression yeah. while you say this next part? Celebrate. Okay. 
No, shallow brain. So it's um, you want one? No problem, because they're everywhere. Oh, in the kitchen of the Taco Bell at two 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 Barranca Parkway <laughs> in Irvine, California. <laughs> Damn it, you got me again, Justin. From now until June twenty seventh, fucking Marty McFly, go get you one. <laughs> Why would you go get you one? They're everywhere and here for good, as long as you can go back in time and make it to Irvine. Um, so that is happening there. Wendy's. Uh, Wait, wants what's to it? Dis- what is it constituted? What is it? This is the most sinister thing about it is they don't say what it is. It's just you don't you probably shouldn't worry about it. No, is what it I'm means. worried about it. I know what I know about like the impossible burger and Satan and tofu and all that jazz, but yeah, they'll never mention this fi- this food. Yeah, don't I worry about it. Don't, don't, okay. They're doing it. They're they're still working with Beyond Meat to make fake Taco Bell meat. So like this is you don't need to sweat this. This is not this is never going to be a going concern. Okay. You'll never hear about this thing again. You'll never see it again. Okay. Wendy's on the other hand is wants to get into the mix with uh, uh in the plant based category with um uh a spicy black bean burger. Ooh, right. Now nah, man, sounds pretty good. But so uh Aaron uh Bennett is the manager of culinary production innovation. And uh, her team uh, helped create this uh, this spicy new product meant for flexitarians. Huh. I don't know if you guys know about this, <laughs> this term, but flexitarians. Uh, according to John Lee, the vice president of culinary innovation, who describes it as not your parents or your grandparents, black bean burger no. so i mr lee i do agree that neither my parents nor my nanny or my grandmother barbara allen would have enjoyed a black bean burger <laughs> just like this <laughs> i can't we are in agreement hey can we not blow past the flexitarian thing is that somebody who sometimes eats vegetables and sometimes eats meat because there's another name for that there's a d- definitely another name for that it's omnivore it's a uh, yeah. It's a it's somebody that it centers on plat, plant foods, but every once in a while you're like, eh, have a bit of meat, please. That's nothing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you. I don't know what you want from me. I'm just here to tell you about the spicy black bean burger. Okay. Uh, um, they explored seventy to eighty different options during the process. Wow. And this is what they came to. We have a. This is. I tell you, man. Fucking John Lee, uh, who I don't know that we featured on the show before. Uh, Bunch Squad. Uh, uh, which is, I should have mentioned earlier, it's a podcast within podcasts podcast that profiles the latest and greatest of brand eating. Um, John Lee is bringing it. He says, we have a lot of equity and a lot of strength and a lot of understanding in terms of what our customers want. Jesus. Part of it is flavor. Yeah. In the world of pa- plant-based protein- Hey, wait, just, there are I'm a lot of- stop you real quick, Justin. Is there a press release here in which a human person said that we had to study to make sure that our customers at a food place wanted to be able to taste the food? food. Okay, yeah. Listen to John Lee's bringing some fucking heat to you now. Part of it is flavor. In the world of plant-based protein, there are a lot of products out there that are just substitutes. And they end up getting built-in sandwiches that I call okay. Oh, snap. That's amazing. They're so not good. flavorful. Yeah. They're bullshit. The, the way Aaron built this, it really is craveable. I, I don't I miss fucking, eating meat. I swear I, to God, <laughs> on my dad's grave. I swear on the grave of my father, John Lee Sr., this burger is craveable. May Christ strike me down <laughs> with his righteous fury. I'll bleed if I'm wrong. You, you you take this knife, you hold it in your hand, in your other hand, taste this burger. If I'm wrong, I want you to stab me directly in the heart. May COVID-19 be supplanted by a far more vicious COVID-2022 that wipes humanity from the face of the earth. But God damn it, this is craveable. I love this fucking burger and I don't, I don't miss eating meat. When I eat that spicy black bean burger, I don't miss so anything. Late. Not even my ex-wife. I love this I burger. A, I don't miss a fucking second of it. It's not just a black bean, says John Lee. Okay. It's all the components together that give it the right texture, the right flavor, nutritional profile that we felt good about. Now we're focused on taste first. I mean, no doubt about it. Big T, little in, is what I call it. Why? Wait, what? I don't. 
Guys, I don't Bitty. know what he means. No, say that again, because that was wild. Okay. That was a Now wild. we're focused on taste first. Make no doubt about it. Big T, little in is what I call it. Big. Get the taste right. Make sure it looks fantastic. Nutrition comes second. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. Big taste. Little nutrition. Little nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the tagline of the spicy black bean burger. A big taste. And a little nutrition. <laughs> hey, hey, um, Lee, I think you're pushing the wrong thing here. No, no, no. I let him know that it tastes great and it's bad for you. Yeah, that's the... Uh, yeah, you don't have to say that part. That's what we want you to skip over next time, buddy. So all these ingredients... Okay, beyond the patty, <laughs> this is like the longest interview I've... It's an interview on QSR. The longest interview I've ever seen about a sandwich. Um, what are the odds that they called him to just get like a quick quote and he would not let them off the phone? Guys, I tell you, I fucking hate vegetables. Fucking hate them. <laughs> hate them. But this is when I eat these, it doesn't make me want to barf like every other time I eat vegetables. I've never no, felt anything before. I held my own baby in my arms. I look at his face and I felt nothing. I took I one yawned. bite of this burger. I cried for the first time in my life oh, out of happiness. Beyond the patty, we wanted to focus. This is Aaron Bennett again. Beyond the patty, we wanted to really focus on having some texture and flavor contrast. As I mentioned, not wanting to have that mushy, boring yep. experience that we see in so many other places. So we added a lot of really nice, crisp, fresh produce. Hell yeah. Like onions and tomatoes and romaine lettuce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we have this really cool new ingredient, crispy chipotle jalapeno. Ooh. They're actually jalapenos. That are seasoned, which is like so weird that you have Wait. to specify that, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, these things, these jalapenos, they're actually jalapenos that are seasoned with a chipotle seasoning that perfectly complements the spicy, the spicy black bean patty itself. And we top it with chipotle sauce. And then they really come together in addition to nice, creamy, cool pepper jack cheese hell yeah hell yeah wait a minute it's not bland it's not boring it's spicy is it vegan pepper jack cheese <laughs> no this guys listen it's not bland it's not boring it's spicy but i like to think of it as an approachable spice oh where you bite into it and you're like okay i can eat this <laughs> you know like when you're at the bar and you see an attractive person but they're not too attractive and, okay. you, and you're comfortable walking up and talking to them but then also if they reject you you're not too sad because they weren't that super attractive to begin with you get it you get it you look at a person and you're like okay i can eat them you get was it. it was there a pr rep hovering over his shoulder and he was like it's so spicy it'll burn your asshole right <laughs> off and they're like no 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 walk that back walk that back okay it's a it's a, an approachable spice yeah yeah perfect 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 dave thomas rose from his grave and tried to choke me and my family to death <laughs> this thing's so spicy he said this isn't my wendy's anymore you have to change the name it's <laughs> change it to hell hut cuz that's what you've done to my beloved brand <laughs> this fucking shit is spicy and craveable walk it back walk it back just a little bit yeah. uh, it's an approachable <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, it must be told. Dave Thomas rose from his grave and turned. Uh, uh, what he meant to say was, uh, it's an approachable spice. Dave Thomas actually rose from his grave to say, "This is a great addition to our menu. It would pair great with a frosty. It would really have to cool down your palate. Just ninety nine cents." He, he busted out. He said, "This is great for vegetarians and uh, God love our troops." <laughs> <laughs> so that it's it is so not spicy it made me hate our troops oh fuck <laughs> no ignore him don't ignore listen him. I have a clear shot take it <laughs> take it out <laughs> god is dead and this sandwich killed him no 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 no, no, no. I've seen the end it was so hot I could see through time to the very collapse of the universe. This no, no, is all no, no, meaningless. No. Nothing matters. <laughs> Everything you do is pointless. We're all on a trajectory that was planned long before the invention of time. But do enjoy the frosty with it. You can dip your fries in it. It's delicious. He's right. It's craveable. The craveability is inarguable. We can all agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> the sniper's nodding his head. <laughs> yes, we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Single tear on his face. You are my best like, friend. I, I have to take this shot, and I have to put you in the ground, but this burger's flavorful and 
but I'll marry your wife just like I promised. <laughs> I will, and I'll raise your son just like you would have wanted with lots of spicy foods. But not you, too uh, spicy. I'm sorry, I have to stop the interview. Sir, did you just Morse code tap on the table that your butt got turned into a volcano by this hot, hot, spicy... No. No. These are actual jalapenos. Wink. This is the perfect triumvirate of butt problems where it's incredibly spicy with several new kinds of jalapenos that are actually jalapenos and mainly black beans and also made at Wendy's. So it's going to have a real, a real kind of ribald bathroom uh, <laughs> after the party yeah, sure. that you should check out. Hey, listen, if anyone from Wendy's is listening, I'm actually a big fan of Wendy's. I love what you guys are doing. I love Wendy's. I love them. Love them. Love Wendy's. I don't know why Justin said that you guys make people's butts hurt. I've never had that experience. A junior well, they, bacon they cheeseburger don't. is like my favorite thing. I don't know. I don't know why Justin. I'm said conflating that the time that I had diarrhea and had to drive quickly to Wendy's to throw away my underwear. But Wendy's was, was there food. for you in that moment, Justin. <laughs> yeah, that Justin. was, and I shouldn't You're be dragging them down. Wendy's for your especially mistakes. when they're churning out some of the most craveable menu options. Uh, I'm a vegan. <laughs> And I have a full time job, so my I'm brother called me. I'm looking for a me, burger that will fucking shatter my reality. <laughs> I'm a vegan and have a full time job, so when my brother called me and offered to make me handmade vegan spaghetti, I accepted. It's now sitting in front of me, and it's gross. The problem is, he spent <laughs> two and a half hours making it, and he's sitting right behind me. Brothers, how do I dispose of the spaghetti he made specifically without uh, him seeing? Follow up. How do I get more food later without getting caught? Mm. That's from stealthily disposing of spaghetti in Spokane. You can't just yeah, put it in tough. the garbage. Yeah, it's too it's visible. Just, He's gonna open that garbage it's, later. It's, yeah, yeah. God, and there's not a lot of like outside animals that eat spaghetti that you could like chuck it to. Well, you would have to make it to a window at that point too. I think your best bet is maybe a two part disposal where you're gonna put it in like a drawer that's rarely used. Right, dump it in that drawer, and then you're gonna recover that in an hour or so when the heat's off. Yeah. Right? And then you're gonna need <sighs> This is a this is a two person operation. Yeah, no, no yeah, matter yeah, what. Yeah. You need a friend to come up yeah, with yeah, yeah, a yeah, collaborator. Yeah, yeah. Um You could mm. do an accidental dump on the floor, right? Where oh, you like you so turn mean, too though. quickly. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's really mean. That's gonna hurt. A lot. You you know, spaghetti is a really good food for Every, scooting everybody. it in, into mounds and then acting like, oh, I couldn't possibly. I'm, yeah, I'm stuffed. I've eaten so much of it. Could you put it on your head and pretend it's your hair? Oh, there's yeah. something there. Yeah, is there? Well, I mean, no, you're gonna there's have something to style there for it. sure. It's a it's a kind of permanent solution though at that point because if it starts to fall off. Hmm. Hmm. You could say, you could ask what's in this and then have them go down the list of ingredients and at some point in there be like, oh, did you say capers? This ain't vegan. <gasps> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, capers. You wouldn't think it, but there's they're just little snail eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you sure? I thought they were like little weird olives. Nah, man. They're fucking no. snail feet. It sucks. You Sucks worked real hard on this. Was, Sucks that you undid it. all that good hard work just because you weren't paying attention to the. How about I order some steaks, huh? I'll get on DoorDash. Let's get some. <laughs> get some steaks, get some steaks and some pork rinds. <laughs> I don't know what you make Jeffy eat. I don't know what you want me to say to this question. I don't. I need full situational awareness <laughs> to do a cheat like this. You didn't even like. You didn't even give us like. Exits. What? Like, uh, you know, we have no information. How here. big are your pockets? Yeah. Are you wearing loose pants like a Jinko jean? Are they lined with yes. spaghetti proof plastic? <laughs> Do you have and, a dog in the house? And it's so important. Easy. Make sure that the plastic is rated for spaghetti. Don't yeah. just use Ziploc. It's not rated for spaghetti. How big is the kitchen counter? Because you could potentially spread like one strand here, one strand there, like some sort of Easter egg hunt where even if they saw individual strands, it would not seem like enough to make up an entire plate of spaghetti. And you could just, yes. I'm like, oh, it was so delicious, I just tore into it like the Tasmanian devil and launched those little bastards all over the kitchen. Yeah, I tore it up all crazy like a wild bull. I just, I spun into it. I, I turned into a tornado and I spun into the middle of it and spaghetti was everywhere. 
I'm oh, so, that's so good. sorry. I mean, you could do it for real though, right in front of them. And just like, la, 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 la. Get, yeah, like d- smash your face into it like the cookie monster. And only you're only going to have to eat a couple bites, but the rest of it's just yeah. going to go hither and yawn. Yeah. If you cookie monster it, uh, it'll look like maximum impact with like minimum. Very intake. little work. Oh, you can also do that thing where you turn like profile to him and you open your mouth up and you turn your head facing upward and you hold up one strand at a time and go like, ah, but actually you're dropping it beside your face on the opposite side of him. Uh, and you're going to do that a lot. It's going to take a long time to get through this. Just now, ow, and it's going to look like it's disappearing into your mouth, but you're not really eating it. It's a magic trick. Mm. Could you turn it into a braided bracelet? Oh, that's cool. Give it, give it right oh, back. Oh, yeah. The Sketty bracelet. The Sketty bracelet for brothers. Uh, how do you fuck up spaghetti that bad, especially once you work on it for two hours? Spaghetti squash. This is where I, I, I've been thinking about the entire time I've been sitting here. Yeah. Spaghetti squash that you've just done wrong, right? Squash has, we could, we could all agree, has a limited, uh, a limited win- uh, window of viability. Yeah. Well, here's what I will say as a, as a parent, it says it's sitting in front of you and it's gross, which makes me think maybe you haven't tried it. So maybe it doesn't look oh. appetizing. Maybe it doesn't look like your thing. Open it up. Open it up. Let's but see. maybe take a bite and see if you like it. How about a three bite rule? Just like Pete the Cat says, you try three bites and you see if you like it. Because it huh? might be good. It might be good, little baby. So open the hanger and here comes the airplane. Room, room, here we come. Brrr. Oh no, we've been shot. Got to aim. Got. We're coming in for a hot landing. Oh, it's the sub with camel being chased by the Red Baron. You're not opening your mouth. What's wrong? Eat it. Oh, no. Then it never crashes into the hangar, does it? No. No. I wish my, I wish my, I'm glad my son doesn't know that. That if he just doesn't open his mouth, I'm not going to like smash the spaghetti into his closed mouth. (laughs) It's a little life hack for you four year olds. Before we wrap up, can I talk about my life, my life real quick? Yeah, sure, I guess so. Um, I this weird thing happened with minions where the groups that were posting lots of different memes, uh-huh. yeah, went private, and then these groups were only minions. It's really weird, guys. Like if you look for these groups, you can't find them anymore. It was really hard to find the last batch. That's not what I want to talk about though. I got into one that was like invite only. Oh, okay. Right, where you had to answer questions like, I mean, I think the question was like, do you love minions? <laughs> was that and a tough now, one? <laughs> it's a tough one, but the, I came down with yes. Um, but now that I'm in the groups, I'm afraid to leave <laughs> because what if I need them? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they would get suspicious if like I left and like, I just want to tell you guys some stuff that's happened in, in the groups. Um, they've gone so that they're not really talking about minions as much as you would think huh. they would be talking about minions. I like, would think they um, would be speaking about the minions quite a quite, quite a bit. bit. I mean, there's a good amount of minions material, but here's a poll um, that someone put up that said the monsters or the Adams family, which one was the best show? Oh fuck, it's very nuanced. I don't know that there's a clear answer to that. So very I'm going to read you guys uh, without any names. I'm going to read you guys. Without skipping anything, the answer, okay? The answer is that this post received. By the way, people go absolutely bug nuts for these. There's 283 <laughs> respondents Jeez. wanting to, rushing, rushing to give you their two cents. Ready? Yep. Both shows are better than most reality shows they have now. Okay. That wasn't part of so it. So wait, wait, hold on. Do you think, can we, did you think those are reality television programs? <laughs> huh. Anyway. Uh, so both shows, okay, both, both, Tammy, both, Amber, I like both of them, Beth, toss up, <laughs> Cassie, love them both, <laughs> Gordon, love them both, Roma, both funny, <laughs> Stephanie, I love both, <laughs> Donna, I love them both equally, Donna, I love them both, can't pick, Sherry, both, <laughs> Hermelina, love them both, <laughs> huh, Scott, love them both. <laughs> Aline, I hate making choices. Crap, I love watching both as a kid. Crap. <laughs> Lisa says, I like both. We're not getting anywhere. Jan said, I both, but if forced to pick, I, I'd go for Adam's family. Claire, 
Both were awesome. I grew up watching both. <laughs> Dwayne, can't choose. Love them both. Angela, Adam's family spelled A D A M apostrophe S. Hi, I'm Adam, and this <laughs> is my, to my family. To my, my wild mixed up family. Deborah, both. Lynn, picture of a flossy skeleton. Okay. Okay. Frank, both. Ah, oh, boy. Which one would you guys pick? Don't make me choose, but probably Adam's family. Yeah, Adam's family, definitely. But that 1313 Mockingbird Lane, an unaired pilot that um, uh, uh, Brian uh, Fuller made, there was an adaptation starring Jerry O'Connell as Herman Munster yeah. and Eddie Izzard as Grandpa, I think. What? Fucking slapped. Yeah, it was very, it was extremely good. The answer is both, um, is what I was looking for. Yeah. Oh, both. both. Yeah, answer, yeah. Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed yourself and had... Uh, a lot of fun and made some new friends. Learn something along the way. Learn something about yourself. Um, our video on demand of the summer boy BBQ is still available for just a little bit longer. If you go to bit.ly slash mbmbam virtual. So go check that out. Uh, oh, Taz Crystal Kingdom, our newest Adventure Zone graphic novel, comes out next week, July 13th, 2021. Go ahead and get that pre-order. What are you waiting for? Uh, it's bit.ly slash adventurezonecomic.com. But even more exciting, we're doing a live and virtual event to celebrate the graphic novel coming out on July 13th. We've got special guests coming, and I'm not going to tell you who they are now, but we've all got to line up. And it's going to be wild, wild, and silly, and you're going to have a great time. Go to bit.ly slash Taz, G-N-L-I-V-E, 2021. That's Taz, G-N, Live, 2021 for more info. It's got event-exclusive signed book plates are available from our partner bookstores. More info can be found at that link. And uh, we have a non-event-exclusive pre-order gift from First Second, which is a Kravitz lenticular laptop sticker. You can submit your pre-order receipts at bit.ly slash Taz for pre-order. A lot of bit.ly's in there, but it's all a lot of worth it. All worth it. Uh, Tell me about that merch, Griffin. Yeah, we got lots of merch uh, at our McElroy merch page, including uh, a new pin of the month for the Gushy Wolves, uh, which if you've listened to the Ether C setup episodes, you know, of course, is the mascot for the, I guess, only school in that entire world. We love the Gushy Wolves. And uh, the sales for that are going to benefit the Innocence Project, which exonerates the wrongly convicted through DNA testing and reforms the criminal justice system to prevent future injustice. There's other stuff on there, too. There's a an, uh, It's Trash sticker from the Mabim Bam TV show. There's a beautiful green stoneware mug with the uh, Taz logo on it. And uh, even the besties is getting in on the game with a, a video game book club shirt. And it's very, it's very stylish, and you'll get lots of compliments on it. Uh, and hey, you know what? Thank you to Montaigne for the use of our theme song. And that theme song is called My Life is Better With You. And when it drops, and we, we know when, yeah. we know when it drops. We basically have our fingers on the switch that when we flip it, it then the song goes live on iTunes. Yeah, it's up to us and we're withholding it. And that's the that, that's yeah. the important thing is that you make sure that you know that it's a fully us and we're the ones that iTunes like calls us every day. It's like, can we have Please. the song now? And we're like, oh, yeah. sorry, we're so busy. Um, did you guys know that Montaigne streams on Twitch? I did not know that, but you it can, tracks. Yeah, it actual Montaigne on Twitch. No. I just watched Montaigne do uh, a Sims 4 stream the other day. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, if you are on Twitch, you can also check out my Twitch channel. Uh, it is the Travis McElroy. I've been getting into Overwatch, if you can believe it, trying to get good at it. It's 1998. Yep, yep. That and NBA Jam are my two yep. new games I'm checking out. Um, here's a final Yahoo. This one was sent in by Brecken Meyer. Whoa, yeah, pretty badass. And it's asked by Shrek and Pryor. Huh. Who? Sh sorry, Shrek and Pryor. Yeah, yeah. it's Richard Pryor's okay. grandson. Got it. His Shrek-based grandson. Uh huh. Shrek inspired. <laughs> Shrek inspired asks. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It just says donkey <laughs> with like five ex with five exclamation points and like four question marks. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how this one got past the filters on Yahoo. Usually, I think it has to be two words, but it just says don't, just says donkey. 
on it. <laughs> Is there a question? Or? That was it, Donkey. That was the yeah, whole Yeah, that was the whole thing. <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. Maybe it didn't load. Let me refresh the browser. <laughs> it finished. No, it's, this is Griffin McElroy. It's the full page. This has been my brother, my brother, me, kiss your dad, square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.